Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. I'm Tommy Grimes. I vlog about people, places, and things that I love from the city of brotherly love to the city of angels. If you want to follow me along on my journey, go ahead and hit subscribe and I would love to have you along for the ride. Last week I started a new series on DNA testing. In the first video, I compared the services and prices between three different companies, Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, and Family Tree DNA. And then I showed you step-by-step -step what the test taking process looks like. In this video, we're gonna show my results and then we're going to compare the differences and variations between the three companies. For some quick background, I started these tests to find my father's biological family. After we learned we had some Jewish heritage, when my big sister Carrie was diagnosed with BRCA1 breast cancer. She's okay today. I got better though. My father was an evangelical minister and he loved Israel. He even studied there a year in college. He would have been thrilled to learn that he had some Jewish heritage, but unfortunately he has early onset dementia and we'll never know. After I sent out my test, I was quoted between six and eight weeks to see my results from all the companies. So which one got back to me first? Drum roll, 23andMe. Uh, within two days they received my test kit and a week later I had my results. Ancestry DNA received my test kit within one week and then two weeks later I had my results. Family Tree DNA took an entire week to get my test kit and then 15 days later I had my results. All of them were way under the six to eight weeks that I was quoted. At the time I took these tests I was living in New York City and I already had a trip planned to Philadelphia to take my nephew to a Phillies game. Side note, cotton candy and Rita's Italian ice in the system of a five-year-old boy are a recipe for disaster. Since I was already heading down there, I thought it would be a great opportunity to look at my results with my sisters. Since 23andMe was the first one to get back to me, and I'm impatient, those are the results that we were reading. Remember, my goal in this journey was to find my father's biological family, learn more about our Jewish ancestry, and find out what my risks are for BRCA1 and dementia. In this video though, I'm gonna focus exclusively on the ancestry side of things, and then I'll make another video in the future about my health results. So what were my results? How much Jewish ancestry did we have? And were there any other surprises along the way? We're about to find out. Let's rewind the tape. Here we go. What do you, what do you hope yeah. our results Let's go both show? Ways. Uh, I don't even know what they can show. Yes. Who do I want us to be related to? Big yeah. projects. Jurgen Klopp. I don't really care. <laughs> Is there a famous Brooklyn Jew? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, let's be related to Bernie Sanders then. I don't know. Anybody. Okay, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> no, you can't steal my answer. It wasn't even your answer. Somebody else said it. All right, so we're going to check our results. Okay, check away. Are you ready? Uh, hour is just a collective Have bargaining a yeah. All right. So Let's get started. So get your results. Okay. So we have five ancestry reports, 43 carrier status, eight genetic health risks, 22 yeah. traits, wellness. You were going to go off and go second. John Match is England, Russia, Poland, okay. and Germany. So wait, how do we go to like... we're white. We're South really Korea, Korea, Nigeria. You should have like figured out how this works before you. <laughs> oh, 34.4% 34. Ashkenazi <laughs> Jewish. Eh, well, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> well, it means that probably one of his parents was, was full Jewish, and the other one was, the, was partial Jewish. Even more, even more than wow, German. More Jewish than we are. How is that possible? It just means that mom, because. Where mom is from in Germany too can have a lot of French and other influences when you go back to that. That's what I've heard of a lot of yeah. German. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can cut it. Well, this is good. So we learned we're Jewish. Thirty-four percent. Thirty-four percent Jewish. Point four. All right. So we're back. After I got my results, uh, Ancestry had me at thirty-eight percent Jewish, and Family Tree DNA had me at forty-one percent Jewish. Family Tree DNA also distinguishes between Ashkenazi and Sephardic. They had me at 32% Ashkenazi and 9% Sephardic. 23andMe had me at 39.2% German or French, while Ancestry DNA had me at 46% Germanic European, and Family Tree DNA had me at 43% Western or Central European. Each of the results had me with 
a little bit of British, Irish, French, Scandinavian, and even a little bit of Italian, which I'm assuming is where my love for pizza came from. 23andMe found 1,196 relatives, while Ancestry DNA found 1,114. Family Tree DNA found 1,142 close or distant relatives. So let's take a closer look at 23andMe. If you click on Ancestry, you'll see this nice little pie chart and options to go further into your three highest Ancestry returns. You'll see that it tells me again how many relatives that I have and that 96% of them are Jewish, which seems high. If I click on my Jewish ancestry, it's gonna bring me to another page with a lot of really interesting information about Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. One really interesting piece of information, and it's really gonna affect me on my search, is this place right here that says, wait, I have how many relatives? Basically because of genetic bottlenecks and endogamy within the Ashkenazi Jewish population, uh, I could have more matches than most people. Also, the genetic relationship could be further apart than stated, so a second cousin could be more like a fourth cousin. However, they do have an algorithm that's supposed to take these things into account. So that kind of explains why I have so many matches with Jewish ancestry, and it's also going to make it more difficult for me to find my closest Jewish relatives. Further down, they offer some more information about cultural food, celebrations, music, crafts and tradition, language, and places to visit. Back on the main ancestry page, I can see my Neanderthal ancestry. I have 264 variants, which is less than 65% of their customers. So I am less caveman than all of you guys. Awesome. I can also see my maternal and paternal haplogroup to find out where my ancestors migrated from thousands and thousands of years ago. One final thing that I think is pretty cool about 23andMe is that they give you the option to increase the confidence level of your results. By default, it shows it to you at 50%, which is kind of low. If I up that to 90%, a lot of my specific predictions kind of disappear and I'm left with broadly European. However, my Ashkenazi uh, results only go down by about 1%. Now in Ancestry DNA, at first I don't really see as many options as I have on 23andMe. If I click on Discover Your DNA Story, I'm led to a map with my Ancestry results breakdown on the right. If I hover over the different color-coded areas, I can see where my ancestors came from. If I click on Germanic Europe, it's going to give me a brief little description about this region. It also tells me I'm 46% German, but it could really be anywhere between 35 or 61%. It also has additional communities, which kind of nails it for me, uh, Pennsylvania settlers. My mother is Pennsylvania Dutch, and some of our ancestors migrated here from Germany in the 1700s. So I can learn more about this community and see what they were doing throughout huge events in American history, like the Revolutionary or Civil Wars. You can also look through your matches and see how closely they're related to you and if they have a family tree. There's also something new called through lines, which connects people in your family tree to your DNA matches. I believe you need to be a subscriber to the US Discovery or a World Explorer service to use this though. Finally, on family tree DNA, if I click on my origins, I can see a map that's somewhat similar to ancestry DNA. If I click on my various ethnicities, I can see where they came from. Again, with Ashkenazi or Sephardic, I can see these groups came from either Central or Eastern Europe or Spain and Portugal. I can also look at my matches and see what some common surnames that are appearing are. For me, I have Cohen, Smith, and Miller. I can also see my ancient origins, which has me at 30% hunter-gatherer, 52% farmer, and 18% metal age invader. Because I did the Y37 test, I get separate matches that are just on my paternal line. I can also look at my ancestral origins, which provides a migration map that is just slightly more detailed than the one that you see on 23andMe. Yeah, they really put Adam there as the first man. There are a lot of really advanced features on Family Tree DNA, so I have a lot to learn. So a couple of final thoughts after looking at my results on all three services. I like how 23andMe is laid out. I think it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and there's a lot of cool bells and whistles that go along with their service. They also give you the ability to participate in different research projects. 
Ancestry DNA is really great if you're trying to find relatives or flesh out that family tree. Remember, they have the largest database at 15 million people compared to 23andMe's 10 million, and family tree DNA's 1 million. If you really want to cover all your bases, I would recommend maybe trying all three services if you can. It really can't hurt, and you never know where that match is going to come from. On 23andMe, you can see in a percentage how much DNA you share with one of your matches, but you need to connect with them to see more information about their ethnicity. Ancestry DNA shows the strength of your relationship in centimorgans and segments. It also gives you the ability to compare your ethnicity with that of your matches. Both Ancestry DNA and 23andMe have their own messaging service, but because you don't know how often your matches are logging into their accounts, it may take a little bit of patience and luck to hear back from your matches. Family Tree DNA also shows your relationship in centimorgans and longest blocks. You can actually contact your matches directly to their personal email addresses. And finally, 23andMe and Ancestry DNA offer mobile apps, so you can take your results with you on the go, and I think they're actually pretty well designed. That's it for me today. If you enjoyed this video or found it at all helpful, please comment, like, subscribe, all those good things. And in my next video, I'm going to dive a little bit further into the background of my family and tell you everything that we knew surrounding my dad's adoption at the start. Um, then I'll be making some more videos comparing the health results of 23andMe and Ancestry DNA. If you want to find out when those videos are live, go ahead and hit the notify button. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all again next week.